Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the application of multiplication property of the DFT. Spe so, specifically, we are going to uh, solve the following problem. Consider a sequence n. Consider a sequence x of n. Consider a sequence x of n uh, of length 4, that is n is equal to 4, that is a 4 point uh, sequence. And we are given the DFT of this sequence, that is DFT of this sequence x of n is given as 4 minus j2 0 j2 and k equal to 0 is 4 so that is x of 0 is 4 so given this dft sequence of the signal x of n uh, our goal is to find the dft that is discrete Fourier transform of the signal x square of n that is square of the original signal that is we have to find the dft of the square of the original signal. So, to solve this problem, we are going to make use of the multiplication property of the DFT. That is, we are going to use multiplication property of the DFT. So, recall that the multiplication property is given by x1 of n multiplied by x2 of n as a DFT, which is basically the circular convolution of the corresponding DFTs. That is, x1 of k a circular convolution with x2 of k. Now, since x1 and x2 are basically same, that is to find x square of n, we can just say x1 and x2 are is equal to equal to x of n. So, therefore, for the square function, that is x square of n, for the signal x square of n, the corresponding DFT is simply given by 1 by n and then circular convolution of x of k with x of k. Therefore, if you let y of n b x square of n then y of k that is the dft of y of n is given by 1 by n x of k circular convolution with x of k so that is the required formula now since n is equal to 4 y of so since n is equal to 4 y of k is defined as 1 by 4 summation l is equal to 0 to 4 minus 1 that is 3 x of l and then x of k minus l mod 4 that is this is the definition of the circular convolution uh, for these two sequences therefore uh, for k equal to 0 that is the first value of y of k that is k equal to 0 y of 0 is equal to 1 by 4 summation l is equal to 0 to 3 x of l and then k is equal to 0 so we have x of minus l mod 4 so that is the value of y of 0 and since x of uh, k is given as 4 minus j, uh, j2 0 and j2 that is x of l is equal to 4 minus j2 0 j2 so using this uh, signal or this dft sequence y of 0 will be equal to 1 by 4 multiplied by x of 0 that is l equal to 0 means x of 0 which is 4 and then again x of 0 mod 4 which is x of 0 so again into 4 and for the second term it is minus j2 that is l equal to 1 x of 1 is minus j2 and then x of minus 1 mod 4 that means x of 3 that means it should be j2 the third term is clearly equal to 0 so plus 0 and then finally we have plus j2 that is for l equal to 3 x of 3 is j2 and then x of minus 3 mod 4 that means it should be x of 1 it means minus j2 so this term will add up to uh, 24 that is 24 by 4 gives us 6 so y of 0 is 6 next for y of 1 we have the summation 1 by 4 uh, we have 1 by 4 summation l equal to 0 to 3 x of l and then x of 1 minus l mod 4 so for y of 1 we have 1 by 4 and then the summation is 4 times l equal to 0 x of 0 is 4 and then x of 1 minus 0 that means x of 1 mod 4 which is x of 1 that means it should be it should be minus j2 and the second term is minus j2 into 1 minus 1 that is x of 0 that means 4 third term is 0 and the fourth term is fourth term is j2 and uh, x of 1 minus 3 that is x of minus 2 mod 4 so x of minus 2 mod 4 means x of 2 that means it should be 
zero. So this term uh, will uh, simplify to minus four j. Therefore, y of one is minus four j. And next, y of two. Y of two is given by the summation given by one by four summation l equal to zero to three x of l and then x of k minus l here becomes two minus l mod four. So this summation or this value becomes one by four into four times uh, l equal to zero means x of two that is zero minus j two into x of two minus one that is x of one mod four that is x of one that is minus j two. The third term is zero and the fourth term is plus j two into uh, x of two minus three that is x of minus one mod four that is x of three that is j two. No, we and then upon simplification this becomes minus. And then y of three, y of three is given by one by four summation l equal to zero to three x of l, and then x of three minus l mod four. So this becomes one by four, four into uh, l equal to zero that is x of three that is two uh, j or j two, and then minus j two multiplied by three uh, minus one that is x of two which is zero, and then zero. And then plus j two multiplied by l equal to three, so x of zero that is four, so it should be four j. Therefore, y of three is four j. So to summarize, y, uh, to gather all the values, that is y of k or the discrete Fourier transform of x of x square of n is given by six minus four j uh, minus two and plus four j. And this uh, result can also be verified in MATLAB as follows. We define the uh, DFT sequence x, that is uppercase x, as four minus two, and then zero, and then zero, and then plus two into one i. So that is the given DFT sequence. Now we want to find the DFT of x square of n. So one uh, possible solution is we can find the inverse Fourier transform, that is uh, I DFT. Of the given sequence, then x is one two one zero, and then we can find the squared signal that is x two will be equal to x two will be equal to x dot square. That means x two will be our squared signal is one four one zero. So uh, the DFT of this signal that is capital X two will be equal to FFT of which is given by six minus four j minus two plus four j. So that is uh, exactly. So that is exactly what we have derived in our uh, derivation. Uh, that is exactly what we have got in our derivation. Six minus four j minus two and four j. So to summarize, we have used the multiplication property of the DFT to derive the DFT of a uh, squared signal. That is, given the DFT of a signal x of n, we want to find the DFT of the square of the signal. So for that we use the multiplication property, which basically says that the DFT of the squared signal is one by n, and then circular convolution of the DFT sequences. So by using that definition, we have we define y of n as x square of n, and then DFT of y of n, y of k is one by n circular convolution of x of k with itself. That means y of k will be equal to one by four summation l equal to zero to three x of l multiplied by x of K minus L mod 4. So that is the definition of the uh, required DFT sequence. So upon using the values k equal to 0 to 3 and uh, applying the given DFT sequence, uh, we can easily find the values of y of k. The values of y of k, that is the DFT sequence of the squared signal. Uh, the DFT sequence is given by 6 minus 4j minus 2 4j, and this value is also verified in MATLAB by simply using uh, the uh, DFT sequence x. And then we uh, der we note down the value. We uh, denote the value x as the we denote the vector x as the DFT sequence, and we enter the values, and then find the inverse Fourier transform. Sorry, the inverse DFT, and then we get the time domain signal, and then we square it. We get x square of n, and we apply FFT to x square of n. We get the DFT of the squared signal, which is exactly in agreement with what we have derived. Thanks for watching.